Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue. Uh, thank you for joining us and happy Black History Month. Uh, my name is Ariel Kaibaga. I'm the Member of Parliament for London West, and I'll be your MC for today's announcement. I'd like to start by acknowledging that I'm joining you uh, here virtually from Ottawa on the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. For any media watching today, there'll be a Q&A session following the speaking portion of today's event. So we have a great announcement with a focus on how we are working to create more affordable housing for Black Canadians. Access to a safe and affordable place to call home is crucial to the overall well-being of our communities, and I'm super excited to hear more details on the work ahead. On that note, I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, the Honorable Ahmed Hossein, Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion. The floor is yours, Minister Hossein. Thank you so much, uh, Ariel. Uh, thank you, uh, and hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining you virtually from Ottawa on the traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg peoples. And it is great to see you MP Kayabaga, as well as MP Michael Coteau and uh, MP Emmanuel Dubo. Thank you for your leadership, as well as uh, the efforts of your outstanding teams. And you, know, you are one of the big reasons why we're able to make this really important announcement today. It is also great to have Emmanuel Meles from the Network for the Advancement of Black Communities with us uh, this afternoon. NAPC has been doing great work to advance our collective efforts towards eliminating systemic barriers faced by Black Canadians every single day. And I've had the pleasure of working with Emmanuel Meles uh, over the years uh, in, in various portfolios, and uh, he's been a staunch uh, advocate for Black Canadians. Uh, today marks the beginning of Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. And this year's theme is February and Forever, celebrating Black history today and every day, because the contributions of Black Canadians, our stories, our history, cannot be uh, confined to one month. We transcend that. And uh, I couldn't think of a better way to kick off uh, Black History Month 2022, uh, off with my colleagues, uh, MP Kayabarga, Emmanuel Dubo, and, uh, and Michael Koto. And today, let's talk about housing. We all agree here, and we are all here because we believe that everyone deserves a safe and affordable place to call home. And having a roof over your head makes the difference between just getting by and getting ahead. But Black Canadians we know uh, today face systemic barriers in the search for affordable housing. You have to just look at Statistics Canada's various reports that show uh, the, different, uh, the different housing needs of different populations in Canada. And you will see that this is not a new reality. It has been an ongoing struggle for Black Canadians for, for a long time. And we know that uh, Black history is, is Canadian history and we're seeing history repeat itself. Uh, with nearly a quarter of Black Canadian households in core housing needs. That is almost double compared to the core housing need for the overall uh, population. And when you look at the uh, core housing need for renters, you find that it, the, you know, the outcomes for Black Canadians is even worse, with one third of Black Canadian household renters in core household need. Uh, this, is, this means that they're paying, 80% of them are paying more than 30% of their in income in rent or mortgages. So these aren't just statistics, though. We all know uh, these, these are the stories of members of our community from coast to coast to coast. And we are very, very familiar with this reality. And it is a reality that simply cannot be ignored. Ce qui nous amène à la raison pour laquelle nous sommes ici aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui, notre gouvernement est, est heureux d'annoncer une contribution de 50 millions de dollars pour aider à créer des logements pour les ménages canadiens noirs. Today, I'm very pleased to join my friends and colleagues, MPs Kayabaga, Koto, and Dubo, uh, and to announce that our government, Koto, and Dubo, uh, and to announce that our government is, is, is making a contribution of $50 million to help create housing for Black Canadian households. What an amazing way to start off Black History Month 2022. This contribution is a new carve out 
of the existing National Housing Co-Investment Fund. And funding will be available starting this year until 2028. And we'll have, of course, more details to share with the public in the weeks uh, ahead. This funding will allow us to further remove some of the barriers that Black Canadians face in the search for an affordable place to call home. And it will make a real and positive impact in the lives of so many, uh, so many communities from coast to coast to coast. Our government understands the unique challenges faced by Black Canadian communities in the housing sector. And that's another reason why we're ensuring that our national housing strategy provides a variety of programs that fit the different needs of Canadians across Canada, across our country. Les défis sont différents et les solutions doivent être différentes. Whether it's housing supply, rental su uh, su supply, rent supports, or even tackling the fight against chronic homelessness, we are addressing each and every need of housing across the housing spectrum that Canadians have. And the co-investment fund is just one important way we're creating more deeply affordable housing, especially for Black Canadians. Through the recently, another example is the recently launched and announced Rapid Housing Initiative. We took a Black Canadian lens to make sure that uh, Black Canadians were included effectively in the Rapid Housing Initiative. So is, so is the case with other programs like the Rental Housing, the Rental Construction Financing Initiative, the Affordable Housing Innovation Fund, and Reaching Home, which is our key program for tackling chronic homelessness. Last year, we joined with Habitat for Humanity to invest a combined $40 million to create 200 home ownership opportunities for hundreds of Black Canadian families across the country. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui n'est donc qu'une bonne, bonne nouvelle de plus pour la communauté. And I have to admit, having lived in social housing for some time, I can't overstate the difference this will make in the lives of people. I know for a fact that it made a huge difference in my life. I was able to uh, pursue undergraduate studies because I had a social housing unit in Regent Park. And although, you know, it, it had a lot of challenges because at that time, social housing was not uh, being funded to the level that it needed to be by the federal government, I still appreciated having that subsidized rent, which allowed me uh, to put more of my money into, uh, into my studies. And it allowed me to, uh, to pursue that education and improve my life. And that is what an, uh, an affordable place to call home uh, does for people. It enables them to pursue their dreams. It enables them to move from just getting by to actually getting ahead. And I know this funding will make a similar impact and similar difference for a lot of people. Looking back, uh, you know, we know the, uh, the, the fact that for us to be able to address these significant barriers uh, to various communities, we need to be smart about the programs that we deploy, and we need to listen to the expertise and the community perspectives in the implementation of various programs, and in this case, the national housing strategy. So I'm really happy to be able to join you uh, today, all of you, for this important announcement. Donc, uh, ce, ce mois-ci, j'ai hâte uh, de célébrer chaque jour les Canadiens noirs et les riches contributions qu'ils apportent uh, à notre pays. And as I said, what a way to kick off uh, Black History Month. And I really want to thank uh, uh, members of Black Caucus, uh, members of Parliament, uh, Ariel Ka Kayabaga, as well as Emmanuel Dubo, as well as uh, Michael Couteau, and many others for really caring about this file and making, uh, making it a, a priority for their advocacy, for their leadership, and, and I thank them. Uh, and I thank you all for being here today. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. What a great story, Minister Hussein. Thank you so much um, for that important announcement and, and the connection to what this funding can do for Black uh, Canadians. And as you said, this new carve out will make sure will make a real difference in the lives of Black Canadians in our communities. Our government believes that everybody deserves a chance to succeed, and that begins with an affordable place to call home. Today's announcement will make sure and help ensure that there's more accessible and affordable housing for Black Canadian households across the country. I'm very proud of the work that our government is doing. Uh, it is once again stepping up to help address the unique needs of our community. 
Our next speaker this afternoon is the Member of Parliament for Don Valley East, Michael Cotto. Michael Cotto, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much and uh, thank you MP uh, Kayabaga and thank you Minister Hussein and uh, my good friend Emmanuel Dubot in Quebec. It's, uh, it's so exciting to, uh, to be here today, especially as we launch Black History Month and to, uh, to launch it with such great news. Uh, before I go any further, I want to acknowledge that uh, I'm joining you here from Toronto, the traditional uh, territory of many First Nations, and recognize the Indigenous past, present, and future here in this great province. Um, I'm so delighted to be part of this announcement that will make housing more accessible uh, for Black Canadians. Uh, there is no question that when we look across the country, there are some serious challenges when it comes to housing. And it's our jobs as members of parliament, as part of a, of a government to look for solutions uh, to help families. And uh, this uh, includes focusing first and foremost on uh, those who face the most barriers uh, to affordable housing. I believe uh, like most Canadians that everyone deserves a chance to own a home. It helps build the foundation and really sets you up and your family up for the future. I'm proud that this, uh, the government that I'm uh, part of, uh, the, the government that we're part of, uh, takes this issue very, very seriously. And under the leadership of uh, Minister Hussein, uh, we've developed a national housing strategy that I believe will work. Um, this strategy is going to help uh, people in my community, people in, in my city that I represent, and of course, Ontario and right across this, uh, this country. Um, it doesn't just make housing more affordable, it gives families the stability they need uh, to lay the foundations down and to, to move ahead. Uh, there are many initiatives that are part of this strategy, like the National Housing Coal Investment Fund, the Federal Community Housing Initiative, the Rapid Housing Initiative. Uh, all of these uh, initiatives are part of a, uh, a strategy to build stronger communities, which at the end of the day benefits all of us. Uh, this initiative today is another um, way the national housing strategy is, is answering uh, the needs of Canadians. And again, I am so proud to join my colleagues uh, as we launch Black History Month and, uh, and join my colleagues from across the country uh, to share this great news. Thank you so much. Thank you, MP Koto, uh, Nasi. Um, and I just want to take this moment to also uh, acknowledge the presence of my colleague, uh, Emmanuel Dubourg. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, now, the next speaker, I'd like to invite em Emmanuel Mels. He's the Executive Director from Network for the Advancement of Black Communities, uh, NABC, uh, to say a few words. Emmanuel, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, um, MP. Kayabaga, and uh, I'm glad to join uh, the Honorable Minister Hussein and uh, MP Michael Couteau and MP Emmanuel Dubor. Um, at the Network for the Advancement for Black Communities uh, and across the country uh, with our peers and, and uh, partners, Black organizations and leaders, we welcome this announcement. Uh, we've been waiting for this type of announcements, I think. The national housing strategy has been uh, a clear focus and interest for black communities across the country. And uh, one of the things that uh, we're really excited about this announcement today is that there's a focus on black led organizations. And I think there will be an opportunity for um, uh, leaders within our housing subsector, so to speak, to be able to work with government to, to really address some of those uh, long standing systemic challenges that uh, the minister spoke in terms of, of housing. Um, housing, uh, I don't have to repeat the lived experience of, of the minister. Uh, it was quite telling for me. Housing is, uh, is an enabler. It's, it's, it's an important aspect of uh, social determinants of health for all of us. And uh, one of the things that we have done uh, working with, with the minister and CMHC last year, we conducted uh, in collaboration with the Monumental, a number of town halls, about four town halls across the country with black leaders. Uh, from Halifax to Montreal to uh, Toronto to Edmonton. And we have heard, uh, heard loud and clear that there are a number of things that uh, Black communities want to see in really increasing the participation in our national housing strategy. This strategy is comprehensive, has a lot of entry points, different programs, but it's very important to really create enablement and capacity of organizations to be able to fully participate. And one of the things that uh, we, uh, we have heard in terms of recommendations that we have put in a report is the need to really have a structural engagement with the government and CMHC to really monitor the progress of the participation. 
So today's announcement, I think, uh, with, a, with a particular focus on uh, black-led uh, organizations is, is a welcome news. Uh, we consider housing as a system challenge for black communities, like health, like employment, and, and other aspects uh, that require collaborative solutions. So we, at NAPS, we start talking about the black ecosystem approach, bringing private sector leaders, faith leaders, governments, philanthropy, community leaders, to work together to really create the conditions for medium to long-term challenge. So today's announcement, I think, uh, is really received uh, with a great sense of, uh, uh, of, of hope and for uh, you know, uh, a sustained engagement and funding uh, for the coming years to really facilitate the participation of Black communities in the national housing strategy. For the longest, myself and many have always been thinking, how do we actually create a, an entry point into strategy. It's a significant federal investment uh, for Canada. And today, and some of the things that the minister mentioned that uh, have already happened, give us a sense of hope, sense of collaboration, a sense of innovation for really moving forward. So I thank the minister and the federal government for taking this bold step today. Uh, on a better day than this one, you know, the beginning of the Black History Month. So thank you so much for, uh, for this announcement, minister. And, uh, uh, NAPSI and uh, many Black leaders across the country uh, will look forward to continuing collaborating with you and the federal government on advancing this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manuel, and to all of our speakers. Uh, and this concludes the speaking portion of the event. We'll now move to the question period for members of the media, uh, if they would like to unmute themselves and ask the question. Thank you, Merci. This is the operator. You may press star one at this time if you have a question. Vous pouvez appuyer sur étoile one si vous avez une question. We have a question from Dr. Vibe from the Dr. Vibe Show. Please go ahead. Yes, good afternoon, Minister. Hope all is well with you and your family and your fellow colleagues and keeping safe. Thank you. Good afternoon to you too. Good. Good. It's good to see Emmanuel and Michael Couto. It's been a long time, so I'll make my question really quick. With this initiative, I know it's going to address home ownership, but will it also address down payment loans and also things like lower cost options like rent to own? Uh, yes, and in addition to that, it won't be just limited to uh, home ownership. It will also cover uh, how it will also cover in, an initiative to help uh, uh, Black Canadian renters who are in much higher core housing need than the general population. So we'll find ways to utilize the, uh, the carve out to make sure we're there for those folks as well. So it is basically um, not just limited to, uh, to initiatives to help with home ownership. Can I ask a quick follow up question? It's up to Ar MP Ariel Kayabaga, she's the yeah. MC. Yeah. Yeah, That's you what, can go ahead with asking. your follow up question. Thank you so much. So you've made the announcement today. When will we actually be yeah, seeing details, deeper details of this initiative? I know you're making an announcement today, but when will we have greater access of the fine print, so to speak, of this initiative? Uh, in, the, in the next few weeks, it's not going to take months. It's going to take uh, weeks. And basically, we're going to roll it out uh, and make sure that the program is as uh, easy to use, uh, as impactful as possible and is much more uh, targeted uh, to make sure that we have uh, the right outcomes to give confidence to the community, both in the process, but also in the results. And I can tell you that the need is great. And uh, today is the first step. Uh, I, I really wanna thank, in addition to my colleagues, um, I don't want to, to forget thanking the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, um, has enabled the creation of this carve out. You have to understand that when you are taking an existing government program and you're carving out a significant amount of funding, in this case, to the tune of $50 million, you need the Minister of Finance and, and, and the Prime Minister to support you. And he has been steadfast in understanding the need for a carve out for Black Canadians, something that the community has been calling for. And I, I also want to highlight the fact that this, this came as a result of engagement with the community over the, you know, since last year and beyond. And what I have heard loud and clear from them, and which is something I personally believed in, but I also 
good affirmation and, and confirmation from the community is that there needs to be a carve out in order to deal with the deficit of not just the core housing need in the community, but also the fact that the organizations are not leveraging the national housing strategy to the extent that other communities are leveraging. And, and we have to address that. And whether that means not just a carve out, but also finding other ways to, to, to keep that Black Canadian lens to our programming, something that I have uh, personally done over the years is the way to go. And this carve out, is yet another example, and as, as Emmanuel has said, a really bold step to, to, to make that uh, wish of the community a reality. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next question, if there's any other questions. As a reminder, you may press star one if you have a question. De nouveau, vous pouvez appuyer sur étoile un si vous avez une question. We have another question from Dr. Vibe from the Dr. Vibe Show. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Another question for the minister. Will there be an action plan for young black people to enter the volatile real estate market? So I, I think what you described there is how can we essentially, I mean, the short answer is yes. We have a number of programs that, that first of all exist and then other proposed measures to either enhance the existing programs or bring new programs on board, like the rent to own program that are all about enabling more people, especially young people to get into the housing market and to access their dream of home ownership. Now in that regard, we have to uh, always, always work hard with all my colleagues, but also with uh, with community organizations like NABC to make sure that as we unfold new programs like the Municipal Housing Accelerator Fund, as we unfold things like Rent to Own, but also as we enhance existing programs like the First Time Home Buyer Incentive, we need to make sure that Black Canadians are included in the process, in the design, but also keeping a really close eye on the impacts to make sure that Black Canadians are also impacted and that they're getting uh, access to home ownership. And if that's not the case, uh, we need to address that, uh, that gap and that deficit. Today is an example of how we're doing that. The National Housing Co-Investment Fund is a great program being used by hundreds, if not thousands of nonprofits across the country. But we noticed that there's a deficit in the Black Canadian community. And we are moving ahead to address that in a concrete way. Um, and we will take the same approach to the promises we made during the election to enhance existing programs like the uh, like the first time home buyer incentive but also as we unveil new proposals like the municipal housing accelerator fund but also rent to own we will make sure that those programs also work for black canadians and in that regard i emmanuel knows this i always make the commitment to make sure that we get it right because we're going to listen to the community. We're going to engage with them. We're going to get their feedback. That's how you get policy right. That's how we arrived at this uh, at this point in time. And we will continue that uh, history of collaboration and partnership and making sure that the community has confidence in both the process and the outcomes of these uh, housing different housing programs. Thank you, Minister Hosen. And that concludes our media question uh, portion. I would now like to ask uh, the, the speakers to join me in taking a picture of today's announcement. So everybody get ready for the picture. And smile for the camera. I think we're good. Emmanuel, you, your picture is the best, Dubo. No. Fact, you know. <laughs> Minister, thanks a lot, and uh, Ariel, thanks a lot, and uh, I look forward to our evening discussion. Uh, with sure, the absolutely. Uh, Sorry, um, the can we? The, the can one we, thing I, I would say, Emmanuel, since I have you on the, on the line, yes, one, my opinion. You don't have to to agree with me at all, but uh, if you do, I would be happy. The one thing Excuse I, I me, want Minister. to yes. But uh, I don't know if you notice that we are still on live. Eh? Okay, okay, absolutely. Sorry, I apologize. We're just uh, going to yeah. do one last. Uh, oh, we, we do another photo? Okay. Yeah, it, it 
baked in safe, so we're just, um, okay, uh, one, two, three. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Maybe we can uh, stop the, uh, the recording. I don't have access to that, but. Okay. Oh, there you go. And the no, no, I was just saying, and Emmanuel. The, and, uh, and the, and the yeah, live Sorry, go ahead, Michael. And the huh? live streaming? Yes. And the live streaming. Samuel, can you help with that? Thank you. Merci. The conference has no